Good morning, and uh, thank you, Fiki, for having me here. I can't uh, emphasize enough the importance of this meet, and in fact, thank all the participants for this response. I was just told by the chairman, Rashish Shahji, that the response has been overwhelming, and it actually indicates a great uh, uh, positive energy, which was long overdue, at least in strengthening the Make in India, specifically for Make in India for the defense sector. So I'm uh, grateful that the FIKI has put all its efforts and managed to bring it all together in such a way that I can uh, see a lot of hope and uh, this kind of response from industry captains with, of course, the energetic uh, and a very open-minded approach from the forces to say we should work together to have this defense equipment manufacturing in India as a big-time effort is a good augury, and I welcome it. So let me formally address all those who are participants here, industry captains, officers of the armed forces, veterans who are now actively advising industry in getting uh, defense equipment manufacturing going in India, representatives who've come from abroad, both from the services abroad and also from industry abroad, and Fiki's own expert team. Thank you for this very good start for the morning. I think self-reliance in defense, to the extent it is possible, has got to be given a full play. With technology moving at a rapid speed, and it's always a sort of catching up game with the technological development which happens around the globe, imports are inevitable in some areas at least. And for India, which had invested in defense production in the public sector domain for a very long time, for decades in fact, and also set up all over the country ordnance factory units, for us it is all the more important that these units, these defense public sector undertakings are made a lot more dynamic. I, in fact, repeat, although it's a sort of an alliteration which I didn't uh, put an effort to get, we have to revive them, revitalize them, and make sure that they are going to display that kind of, kind of a, to be ahead of the curve approach in their uh, management. So at the moment, as we review the Ordnance Factory and also the public sector, defense public sector undertaking, we find that they have immense opportunities and immense assets with which they can really meet with most of the requirements of the Indian Armed Forces. However, they need revitalizing. They need re-energizing. They need to be dynamic and therefore, uh, it is in that uh, large effort that I would appreciate participation by private sector, participation by uh, OEMs abroad to work together to make sure that this invested asset is leveraged considerably so that we don't search for uh, non-existent participants. But while saying this, I'm conscious that this is not to tilt the balance in favor of only public sector. In India, private sector in the last at least two or three decades have been steadily coming into defense production, and I encourage them because they have shown immense agility and the nimbleness with which they have adapted to this sector, which has till now remained opaque, is 
uh, amazing. In fact, it uh, surprises me that Indian industry, which is normally very cautious, has actually identified the opportunity which exists in this area and had been very clear in the way they have maneuvered themselves into slotting themselves in defense manufacturing, be it for the naval purposes or for the purpose of Air Force, and the extent to which they have come forward has placed some of these private sector units as a tier one company. Today, they are not just producing components, but they are certainly producing large platforms with almost 30 to 40% in indigenized outsourced materials. In fact, today I can say by the year 2017, 16, 17 financial year, the outsourced component of a production value of any unit, which is manufacturing in India, the production value, if you take it 100, 30 are outsourced within India. That itself is a big, big difference because that means that the tier one companies which have now positioned themselves as a global platform of manufacturing, capable of platforms and manufacturing such vectors, which are very, very important for us, are today not just doing it all on their own for the sake of cost effectiveness and competitiveness, and in order to see that the uh, spread of uh, value chain is nice and widely done, a lot of uh, absolutely 30% level outsourcing is happening. And this is very important, especially when your value chains will have to be sustained, competitive, competitive and spread across, so that you don't face the risks of you know, want of supplies. So that being uh, the way in which the ecosystem is come to be built in India. The government rightly thought, and I, I will put on my record the appreciation for the Prime Minister's readiness to say, yes, this is the right time to push ahead with announcing defense production corridors. And when we say defense production corridors, we are not trying to uh, transplant something which does not have the ecosystem into an area where it may not just take off. Enough work was done by the Ministry of Defense in locating areas where not just the presence of public sector undertaking or the OF OFBs existed, but we also identified areas where private sector, small, medium industries, and also some of them big enough, have on their own in the last 20, 30 years started manufacturing components for OEMs abroad to whom they were supplying and made significant contribution to our export. Such unit existed in certain areas and we mapped them. And post mapping, it was completely justified that the corridors be announced where the Prime Minister has chosen to announce. The one which was announced earlier was in that stretch between Chennai to Bangalore, where you had the advantage of the naval units, tier one units, private and public, tanks and ammunition based units, private and public again, and for Air Force, public, less of private, but components being produced for the public sector all existed, all as though they were just waiting for the government to recognize them and give them that additional push. And therefore, between Chennai to Bangalore, passing via a stretch of ordnance factories and defense public sector undertakings, passing through Tiruchi, passing through Coimbatore, where, of course, incidentally, we have also announced an innovation hub, not so much in, with the universities, which I'm not against, but here was a, a small and medium industries association, which was ready to take the challenge of bringing startups and small and medium industries to innovate for serving defense production. So in Coimbatore, that was already sort of made a beginning. We've set up an innovation uh, center with the small and medium unit of Coimbatore, the association called Kudisia. So Coimbatore, then we move over to Salem. Via Hosur, that corridor reaches Bangalore. And you know that is already uh, part of the Delhi, um, Chennai, Bangalore industrial corridor stretch. Of course, it doesn't go through Tiruchi or Salem, 
but we've made that the quad that we've marked for defense production corridor touches and runs parallel also with the industrial corridor between uh, Chennai and Bangalore. So there's a lot of macro level planning, stakeholder consultation, and again, I put, put on record my appreciation for the FIKI's engagement with the Ministry of Defense, where they have actively participated, ensured that the uh, concerned areas are surveyed, stakeholder meetings were held by them, they came back to give me inputs with which we speeded up before the budget to ensure that the Ministry of Finance was on board with us for the announcement of corridors. And therefore, there's a great sync between industry, Ministry of Defense, and uh, the Finance Ministry at the resources level. But the point that was earlier made the coordination between Department of Industrial Policy and Production, DIPP, and the Home Ministry is also actively pursued. So the industry and also the OEMs who have come from abroad should have now the comfort that the sync between all these departments and ministries is absolutely well-oiled and it's moving to everyone's satisfaction, I would think. Of course, there can be always pain points. Like uh, the chairman said, we will have to work on them if just to expedite on uh, you know, decision making and the licensing related matters. On uh, the way in which we've been pushing at the policy of the NC level, you know that we prefer the IDDM, the Indian designed and developed and manufactured within India as the first priority. But of course, that's not to exclude uh, make in India from the point of view of uh, get the joint venture, get the technology and manufacture it. We have not excluded licensed manufacturing. So all this is being covered without much of a exclusion that anyone would doubt if there is going to be a restriction on any kind of manufacturing, not at all. And of course, uh, you know the FDI policy which is going to have a bearing on defense for up to 49% it goes through the automatic and anything above 49, of course, uh, very systematic but not time consuming. Let me underline, not time consuming uh, approval of the government can be obtained. Now even approvals from the government are simplified, so there is just no worry about loss of time in it in your uh, planning purposes. As regards exports from India, you manufacture India, you serve the Indian demand, Post that over and above that for any export manufacturing that you would plan. You, you know under the SCOMITS category six cat, uh, heading, the munitions list has already been uh, opened up. That which was all the while held reserved has now been populated. There is absolutely a clear and a very well-defined standard operating procedure for export promotion, uh, particularly of the munitions. And that list has been revised and it's also published and kept on our website. Uh, the ministry also has uh, simplified on make two procedures, uh, many of which has been already announced. We've said that once trials have been uh, conducted, prototypes have been developed, there shall definitely be a certain level of certainty, absence of ambiguity in your orders. So there shall not be a doubt in your mind that once the prototype has been developed and has been test, uh, tried out by the, the trial rounds have been held, you're not going to have to worry whether the orders will come through. They will certainly come through. But not just that. If there are, even if we don't establish a necessity for a product or a component, if there is an industry which can tell us or a startup which can tell us that they have a product which they think will have a certain usefulness for us in the forces, you're welcome so much to, to tell us that this is available, go ahead, ask us for how much we can produce, can we scale up and so on, we are willing to engage with you. So you don't need to wait for us to say this is the product for which we have a necessity, you think you have something, tell us, we are willing to deal with it. Um, and of course, uh, documentation has been minimized uh, that shouldn't consume too much of your time. You can focus on your core activity. Uh, innovative solutions are being welcomed. And I think 21 projects have been accorded approval in principle already. Um, 
the notification has been uh, brought out, and that will show that the Make in India, Make Two procedures have rapidly undergone uh, simplification, and it's with the industry's input that we've made it proactive. I don't close chapter on May, Make Two. You're welcome to still give me inputs to say, can some more additions, can some more tweaking be done? We are very eager to hear from you on it. Uh, as an incentive, again, industrial licensing for manufacturing for defense has also been liberalized. Yeah. I think uh, manufacturing of parts, components, subsystems, production equipment, and testing equipments, uh, no license is required from the government. I, I want that to be absolutely upfront, that we don't require licenses for manufacturing these um, certain levels of subsystems and other things. Even for the items for which license is required, the initial validity has been increased from three to 15 years. So no, you're not going to be doing the run around, the running around every three years saying, is it going to be uh, re-licensed or is it going to take more time? We've uh, extended to 15 years. And there are 37 defense licensee companies holding ind industrial licenses for manufacture of arms, ammunition, and explosives. This number can grow, provided enthusiasm is seen in the industry. Uh, outsourcing, as I said earlier, has been increased. Uh, if, if you go by the value of production, by the year 2016-17, it has gone up to 39% uh, being outsourced. So that itself shows you that we are eager, and that's going to apply to all manufacturers. Uh, you can see clear signs that people are willing to outsource, and therefore small and medium industries can uh, be assured that they are going to have their products welcomed. Um, I think uh, broadly it was referred that the ministry has already set up an industrial uh, cell for defense within the ministry where, where uh, companies are getting registered, products are being listed out, and anyone who wants to look at what kind of products are going to be procured for the next two decades can see it all there. And if you're one of them, you can join in. If you're not one of them, you know what you have to manufacture for, manufacture for us to be interested in your uh, production uh, related activities. So the next major thing about which I would like to draw your attention is the way in which we want to activate the corridors. I think uh, quite a lot of activity has already gone on ground. Many of you all who are from South India would have already noticed that bringing many uh, uh, manufacturers together clearly suggesting to them that they could register themselves as societies so that each small manufacturer doesn't feel that he's too small to deal with different kind of orders. In every town that is a milestone in the corridor. So if I took the corridor in Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Tiruchi, Coimbatore, Salem, Hosur have each had, except for Tiruchi, have each had a extensive consultation process. These units which have been coming, others can join even now, have all been spoken to by the Ministry of Defense officials, explained as to what are the kind of things we are looking for, what would they want in turn from the Ministry of Defense so that their defense production capabilities can be enhanced. Common f uh, investment in common facilities, testing labs or anything that they may think that they don't need to invest and it will be better for the government to invest, we're willing to hear, we'll work it out with them. All this is being done in each one of the areas. Some are specialists in ammunition manufacturing. Some have already had the advantage of linking with, let's say, the Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So for each one of them, the requirement in the corridor itself may vary depending on each of the places. We are applying our mind and taking the inputs from the industry located in that uh, near in, uh, uh, in the vicinity of that place and accordingly planning where the money should be invested for what purpose. So it's done with your input rather than people in Delhi, South Block sitting and saying this is what we want to do. So I would invite an active participation of industries who are looking for partners, 
industries who are located, located already in these areas, but who are not yet in defense manufacturing, manufacturing, or even those who are in manufacturing wanting to understand how the investments will have to be planned for the next decade. So this engagement, I would draw your attention, is very important. And there, after this end of the month, this month, we will have a report telling me as to where the money should go, how it has to be planned. Now, of course, April second week is the Defense Expo week. All this is culminating towards the Defense Expo, where again, for the Indian small and medium industries, we've already announced a 50% reduction in the rental for space. So there is an accent given for small and medium industries to become active in finding buyers, in finding uh, joint venture partners, and also making sure to display all that they can do for the market to absorb it. A similar exercise is also happening in UP. Of course, it's a month after what has happened in Tamil Nadu. So UP, again, is going to make use of the existing advantages of the defense production units which are located there. Kanpur seems to have more than six such units in that entire belt. There are such defense uh, public sector undertakings. So this corridor, as we envisage in the UP, is going to be from Agra, inclusive of Aligarh, coming down to Jhansi. If I can visualize the map before me, Agra, Aligarh, Aligarh, Agra, Jhansi, going up to Chitrakoot, and linking with Kanpur and Lucknow. So this is going to, again, be one of the major, similar kind of experiences there also. Small and medium units will have to come and approach. We are approaching them as well. All the public sector un units will have to be revitalized, re-energized. Uh, private participation of uh, people from abroad or from India who would want to join hand hands with them will also have to be uh, mapped out. So that exercise for UP also will be happening. Now, over and above all this, the general budget, of course, has already made provision for the corridors. We shall be, we shall be investing a lot uh, in making sure that facilities are created in order to encourage defense manufacturing. The AON, acceptance of necessity, has been accorded for procurement of 8.6 lakh weapons, which, is, which was earlier referred to also. And that includes assault rifles, close quarter battle carbines, carbine and light machine gun. Units. This entire quantity has been earmarked for the Indian industry, excluding uh, OFB. And in this context, wide publicity for the participation of the Indian industry is also given to various industry chambers. Fiki is one of the active members in that. So I would want industry to uh, make the best of what is being offered, give us further ideas if we can do further. And in order to kickstart the above project, eight different types of ammunition, a total of about 21 variants for artillery guns, tanks, infantry combat, ve combat vehicles, air defense guns, and infantry ve vehicles have been selected for manufacture by Indian industry. So if we are detailing, much to uh, your fatigue, I'm sorry, the detailing is what we have spent a lot of time on. And I would want you to appreciate that we are not just talking cursorily about manufacturing in India for the defense. We are getting into details. And that is where we would also like to invite uh, your input so that the effort, both at the macro and the micro level, actually means and translates into something on the ground. Um, the RFPs for the selected ammunition were uploaded on the government's e-procurement site, a portal which is specifically for this. Between will be up, uh, these were uploaded already, and the portal is uh, open for people to see it. Uh, uh, the Korean gendarme uh, to the RFPs in respect of seven cases was issued between December 2017 and January 2018. I think I probably, in my enthusiasm to 
draw your attention to too many details, gone into uh, an annoying number of uh, specifications, but uh, my effort has been only to say that we are not going to be uh, dissuaded from this exercise for want of effort. We are not going to get dissuaded because of the detailing or because of the rigor of planning for defense because it is so wide and variant and also complex. I want to assure you that the ministry is fully uh, keen in opening up the sector, drawing a lot of private participation, both of India and also companies from abroad. Self-reliance is underlying uh, uh, the platform on the basis of which everything is getting built. But however, because we are one of those large procurers, we need a wide basket of uh, goods, munitions, platforms in every sphere of defense and defense management. So I thank the Fiki for having given me this uh, indulgence in speaking into too much of a morning's time, yes. but uh, I will welcome this active engagement so that whatever the Prime Minister has had in his mind in terms of defense self-reliance, manufacturing in India, not just for manufacturing for our procurement, but making India as a defense export hub is realized. So with your cooperation, I hope we'll be able to achieve that. Jai Hind.